well, only one big story in town today, and this is the Prime Minister's uh, extraordinary press conference yesterday, the rowing back on these enormous green pledges. Is the Prime Minister prepared to let the planet burn just to get voters from elderly car owners? Absolutely not, and that's certainly not what the announcement yesterday was about. This was about making sure that our transition to net zero is done in a fair and proportionate way. It needs to be something that is affordable, otherwise we won't have the consent of the British public to do the right thing. That's not what former Tory MP Zach Goldsmith says. He says this is cynical beyond belief. The Prime Minister is pretending to halt frightening proposals that simply do not exist. He's doing it to turn the environment into a US-style political wedge issue, something the UK has avoided all my political life. Sunak is chucking the environment into a political fire purely to score points. It is reprehensible. That's from, from a Conservative. Yeah, yeah, I know Zach Goldsmith very well. He is a friend. I fundamentally disagree. Let me finish. I fundamentally disagree with what he has said. We are listening to the concerns people are raising with us. Most people in this country don't have the kind of money that he has. We have to think about what people can reasonably afford. We have people who are not connected to the gas grid, who are being made to make changes, there are people you know, who use oil tanks and so on, that are simply not feasible. We are looking at supply chain issues around batteries, where last time I sat on this sofa, we were talking about China, and uh, you were asking me whether it was, uh, China was a friend or foe. Electric vehicles, the supply chains for those rely on uh, Chinese batteries mostly. We have to think about that. We need to make sure that what we're doing is right for the UK. This is not uh, some, sort of cynical, uh, some sort of cynical ploy. I've been the business secretary now for almost a year. I know what businesses are saying. This is not just about big business. There's small business to think about. This is the right thing to do, and I fully support the Prime Minister. You, you mentioned the last time we sat here. It was nine days ago. Mm -hmm. You were off to Cowley to launch the, the, the Mini's new EV plan. Mm -hmm. Did you know then that the government was going to row back on these pledges? Well, I had been making uh, representations to the Prime Minister. He had not made uh, his decision uh, known to all of us, but these were, these were conversations that we were having. So I'm quite pleased that, um, that this has happened. But that was on Monday. On Friday, I had another big announcement where we are, we're saving Port Talbot, the Tata steel plant, at a cost of £500 million. That's the single biggest carbon emitter in the UK. So it is wrong to say that we're not serious about net zero when we're spending quite a lot of money making serious decisions like that, which don't just help save the planet, but also save jobs and help to regenerate entire areas. But it's massive mixed messages to business, isn't it? And Ford reaction yesterday, our business needs three things from the UK government, ambition, commitment and consistency. Mm -hmm. And a relaxation of these rules undermines all three. Mm -hmm. This Conservative government is undermining business, nope. according to no, one big not. business, Ford. Uh, first of all, Ford made that statement without even hearing what the announcement was. So this is what happens when people respond to social media speculation rather than listening to what the government is actually they saying. Haven't they haven't changed uh, their views they since haven't, the but, statement. But other, but other car companies have come out and said something different. Toyota, for example. And what I would say, without naming any further companies, is that businesses tell government a lot more than what you might uh, see in a corporate press release about the challenges which they are facing. And we take all of that into account when we make our decisions. But in terms of, of the goalposts that have now changed, that has changed, the date of 2030 to 2035 for the, the banning of, of new uh, diesel and petrol cars. Mm. But the staging posts on the way, for example, in this January coming up, 22% mm. of, of these cars that have mm. to be produced have to be electric. Yeah. Those aren't changing yet. So you can see where business is coming from, that they are getting mixed messages from the government and no stability. No, no, not, not at all. In fact, what that does is give them the certainty and the consistency, which they're talking about, in the near term, while providing flexibilities for people in the longer term. This is the right balance to strike, and I think it's the right thing to do. What we have said is that at 2030, there won't be a complete ban on um, uh, in, uh, uh, ICE vehicles, the petrol and diesel engines. But we expect that by then, with the uh, mandates which we're putting in place, we would have got to about 80% of electric vehicles in the populace, but doing it in a way that people can manage. That's the right thing to do. OK, that's, the, that's one car industry that's commented on. E.ON, let's talk about them. They don't believe it makes economic sense either. Chris Norbury, the chief executive, says that, that Rishi Sunak's plans are condemning people to many more years of living in drafty homes that are expensive to heat in cities clogged with dirty air from fossil fuels, missing out on the economic regeneration that this ambition brings. 
I mean, do you think that this really makes economic sense if we, if we step aside from, from whether or not it's the right thing to do for the environment? Yes, yes, I do. And I think what I would say to the CEO of Eon is to actually look at what the Prime Minister has announced. Some of the plans we put in place were asking people to make changes that physically could not be done to the homes that they were living in. You can't put a heat bump yeah, uh, you can't put a heat pump in certain types of property. It doesn't necessarily work uh, in cities where you have um, high-rise buildings. We need to make sure that we're doing things that are sensible and actually achievable. We still have the commitments. We still have the commitment to uh, help reduce uh, carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. So the commitment hasn't changed, but we're now doing it in a way that is honest with the public about what the costs are and making sure that people can pay for what it is that we're asking them to do. But these changes, they don't really help the poorest in society, a lot of people would argue. The poorest in society aren't fretting about when they're going to replace their car with an electric car because the poorest in society don't drive in this country. I think, the poorest I think, in I think society I'm, are not I'm, worried about I'm, installing I'm a heat I'm so pump. sorry, but that is a ludicrous statement. If you step outside of London, come to my constituency, you will find the poorest in society drive because they live in a rural area. That, These but, rules... No, 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 no. What you said is actually quite astonishing. It is not These, astonishing. It is a third astonishing. of the country doesn't what drive. You, what, a third, the third of the country doesn't people own People who cars. live in cities... People who live in cities will be able to deal with this in a way that is quite different from people who live in towns and and rural areas. We need to think about everybody, not just the metropolitan bubble. There are people bubble. that live in, ci yes, in, there are. in cities across the country. This is nothing to do with an urban bubble yes, and yes, metropolitan it, 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 London. I'm afraid, I'm I live afraid, in the countryside and just, I come from Newcastle. Well, I'm afraid that my constituents, I'm afraid bubble. that my constituents raise these concerns all the time and those who are least able to afford it are the ones who are making the most complaints. And we as a government are thinking about them. So I completely disagree with that assertion. What about those who are poor and living in rented homes in cities or in the countryside who are now not going to get their heating upgraded by their landlord because of this? That is not that is not what the policy is. We haven't said that there should be no heating upgrades. What we have said is that people won't be forced to change the type of boiler that they have before a certain date. They will still have those. And in fact, what this is doing is making it easier for them because they won't necessarily have to take a more expensive option that might actually be less practical. That is the right thing to do for those, rented, uh, those, those people in rented properties. I put to you criticism from some elements of business, criticism from some politicians, mm. criticism from the international community. Mm. Al Gore said yesterday, the prime minister is wrong. We are meant to be world leaders, or at least aspire to be. Why does the prime minister seem to think that simply bringing the UK into line with some countries is better than punching above our weight? We have to do what is right for the UK. Al Gore is not a politician in the UK. Rishi Sunak is the Prime Minister of the UK. I've told you that we, as a government, have looked at this very carefully. We haven't rushed these announcements. It's not because of any political ploy or any by-election. We've been looking at the numbers. We've been looking at the dates. We've been looking at the macro environment. You look at what's happening with energy costs, uh, Russia's war in Ukraine, an electric vehicle uh, is not quite as cheap as it used to be to run. We've been looking at all sorts of things to make sure that what we're asking people to do is something that they can practically do. That's the, that's the right thing. The Prime Minister's made the right decision.